remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again for another uh, glimpse, if you will, into the political scene, our little companion video show we do to go along with our radio show that airs each and every Tuesday on truthfrequencyradio.com, 90.7 FM in Denver. Glad you could come over and join us on the video side this week. And one of those vexing questions facing people in Washington right now is how do you get rid of Donald Trump? How do you beat Donald Trump? And when Donald Trump got into this presidential race, so many people thought that he wouldn't last long. They thought he would put his foot in his mouth, and uh, pretty soon the attention behind him or the grassroots support behind him would just kind of peter out and go away, and he wouldn't be heard from again. Well, they've been wrong about that. Donald Trump right now is essentially lapping the field in terms of his support, being the front runner in the GOP race. And as I've told you, not only on this show, but on the radio show many times, I am not a Donald Trump supporter necessarily. I'm a Ted Cruz guy. I think that Ted Cruz stands for a lot of the same things that Donald Trump does, but maybe he does it a little bit more steadily or a little bit more thoughtfully or whatever, and he's my guy. But by that being said, though, i got to admit that there's a lot of things Donald Trump says and does that I like. Doesn't mean that I entirely trust him. Doesn't mean that there aren't inconsistencies in what he says a lot of the times. Doesn't mean that if you go back and look at the things he said in his record in the past, that you got a doubt of his conservative bona fides. But that all being said, at least what he's saying right now has a lot of value to it. So I like the fact that he's in the race. I like some of the things that he's bringing to the table, the discussions he's putting forth and he's making people have. I give Donald Trump all the credit in the world for that. And yet all the political classes, all the chattering class, all of the consultants and so forth seem to be dumbfounded at how to beat him. Well, today on this show, I'm going to give you, all of you folks out in Washington, all of you folks who work for the other candidates, I'm going to give you a plan to defeat Donald Trump or at the very least, to become competitive with him. That in and of itself would be a big deal for most of you. Now, first things first, we've got to analyze why Donald Trump is the front runner. What is it about him that's, that's resonating in this crowded field of candidates, 17, 18 guys, however many it is now, what is it about Donald Trump that's making him stand out? It's not the hair. It's not the celebrity. If it were no bigger than that, he would have come and gone by now. But really what's making Donald Trump resonate is his message. When he came out and, and talked about illegal immigrants being murderers and rapists and some of them might be good people, that hit the nail in the head for a lot of the American public. There's an awful lot of us that heard him say that and instead of being offended like the media thought we would be, we instead said, that's what I've been saying all along. That's what we all say at the barbershop when we're talking politics and we're gathering on the water cooler at work or wherever. Finally, someone's saying it. Someone gets where I'm coming from. Likewise, when he talks about doing battle with China economically, or whether he talks about how to take a hard stance with Iran and how to do battle with them and take the military to them and take their oil, a lot of us are saying, that's what I've said all along. When he talks about the idiots over in Ferguson that are protesting and looting and shooting police officers and all that they're doing, and he... he makes an equivalency between them and illegal immigrants we say yeah that's right whether or not it's actually true that there are illegal immigrants within the ferguson gangs the fact that he recognizes both of those are tremendous dangers to america that's a big deal and frankly those type of things that direction he's giving is something that none of the other candidates are really doing and that's the key a lot of people criticize donald trump for not having a lot of hard and fast policy, not a, not a lot of detailed policy, not a lot of detailed ideas for how to do these things like deport all the immigrants. And to be quite frank with you, those criticisms are right on. Those criticisms are incredibly legitimate. But that being said, he's the only one even going this direction. So if you've got a, a crowd of 17 or 18 candidates and only one of them is going the direction that you as a voter want to see a, a politician go, does it really matter so much to you that that candidate does not have detailed policy about how he's going to do it? Because the other candidates who are going in another direction, they can tell you all about their detailed policies, but their detailed and thought out policies and, and, and agendas and so forth, they're all going in the wrong direction. 
I don't care how well thought out your plan is. If it's going in a direction, I don't want to go. I'd rather have the guy who's at least going to go in my direction, even if he doesn't quite know how yet. So that leads us to how you can defeat Donald Trump. It may be true that right now Donald Trump is all style and no substance. But that style and lack of substance is at least going in the right direction. It's at least talking about getting rid of the illegal immigrants. It's at least talking about being tough on terrorism and our foreign enemies. All the other well-thought-out plans of the other 17 candidates don't seem to be doing that. Therein lies the strategy. If you're going to be competitive with Donald Trump or maybe even defeat him, you've got to do two things. Number one. You have to display the same zero-tolerance attitude towards America's problem uh, people and problem groups that Donald Trump has shown. You, too, have to be zero-tolerance against illegal aliens. You can't come out and say, oh, we can't deport the illegal aliens. Here's what I want to do instead. you got to say, Donald Trump, you're right. we got to get rid of the illegals. you got to show a zero-tolerance attitude towards Muslim terrorists, towards ISIS, towards Iran towards all those people that are trying to destroy Christianity and Christian people, even the, the people out there that threw Kim Davis in jail, you got to be zero tolerance on them. you got to show a zero tolerance attitude towards those urban thugs that are looting and stealing and shooting police officers and then having the temerity to protest and complain anytime they're caught. You gotta have a zero tolerance attitude towards those people because that quite frankly is where your voting base is at right now. That quite frankly is where a lot of the American people, some of which have not voted very frequently, are at right now. That quite frankly is where you're gonna win this election. So you've gotta have that zero tolerance attitude towards all those people. But then how do you separate yourself from Trump? Because Donald Trump effectively has, or is at least portraying that type of zero tolerance attitude. So yeah, you gotta show the same attitude. But once you've done that now, you got to show that you actually have some plans and you actually have some policies that will get these things done. Because as I alluded to earlier, the Achilles heel of Donald Trump is that while he's going the right direction, he doesn't seem to have any concrete policies for how to get there. And that's been enough for him so far because nobody else even seems to be going in the right direction. He is. But if you commit to going the same direction that Donald Trump is going, and if you commit and show us that you have detailed plans for how to get there, then you can turn that argument around on Trump and say, you know what, Donald, you're right. We got to get rid of these illegal aliens. We got to get them out of the country. Here's how I'm going to do it. Now, how do you intend on doing it? Now you flip the script. You got to say, Donald Trump is right about the thugs in Ferguson. Here's what I'm going to do when there's civil unrest in these places. Here's how I'm going to take a hard line on him. How are you going to do it, Donald? If you do that, you can not only get on that same level as Donald Trump in terms of his supporters, but you might even beat him. You see, the American people right now are in a position, when I say the American people, I'm talking about the normal, right-thinking, traditional Christian American people, the salt of the earth in this country. Not all these little you know, outlier groups that are trying to tear down the country. I mean real Americans. That's who we're talking to here. Real Americans today see that we're all in the crosshairs. We see the violence that comes in places like Ferguson or even the other day from that, that gay man on the, the live TV out in Roanoke, Virginia who, who shot the TV reporter. We know that we're in the crosshairs all the time. We see it from the president on down. It's gotten to a point, a lot of us are even armed everywhere we go these days. That's who your voters are. And your voters want someone who's going to stand and fight with them. Trump has shown the willingness to do that, even if he hasn't exactly shown us how. If the rest of you candidates show us that you have the willingness to do that and that you have some concrete plans and concrete policies how to do it, you might just overtake him. That's all for this week. This is America's evil genius, Travis Cook. We will see you next time.